Psalm chapter 63. Psalm 63. <clears throat> Psalm of David. Um, while it says in the, uh, the title uh, that he was in the wilderness of Judah. Now, uh, he could, uh, mo most, um, when I was studying this, say that they feel like this occasion happened during the time he was uh, running from his son, Absalom, and that very well could be the case. But I believe that this, is, this psalm, just like the last uh, that we did, it doesn't have to be a particular uh, situation. Uh, I want us to... Uh, as we're reading this psalm, and I'm going to read all 11 verses first. So and I want you to just listen, listen to certain things, like listen uh, to what David is praying for. And, and I think we can tell that this psalm's a little bit different than some of his other psalms. You know, like for instance, uh, there are several psalms that we've uh, studied uh, with David where he is, his heart is broken, he's He's weary, uh, he, he's tired, he's hungry. Uh, even though he trusts in God, he still is in the situation, right? He's running from it for his life. He's trying to hide, uh, and he's struggling with that, right? With his mind, he's struggling with, um, with the people, with the words that are being said about him, the rocks that are being cast at him, uh, things like that. I mean, have you ever had somebody say something about you that you know that's not true? Uh, as far as who you really are, and it's very hurtful. Um, and not only that, um, dodging arrows and things like that. Now, I haven't had to dodge any arrows, uh, <laughs> thank God, um, any bullets or anything like that. Uh, but it, nonetheless, our trials are hard. Uh, they are, they, we struggle with them. And I think that's what we're going to see in this psalm is... David's uh, desire for his fellowship with God. And that's what we all need uh, to, uh, to make sure that in our life that we are seeking the fellowship with God. And, I, and I, so I'm going to go ahead and read the first le these 11 verses first, starting with verse 1 of Psalm 63. O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and with the mouth, or with my mouth, shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches, because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for the jackals. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Did you hear at any point in this psalm David never says, God, get me out of this wilderness. God, remove the enemies that are chasing me. God, remove the weariness that I am feeling. No. But yet he was in those things. He was in that wilderness. And he was saying, I seek you early in the morning. My soul thirsts for you, not rescue my flesh longs for you. I, my, the, my thirst is not for water in the dry land, but my thirst is for you. 
You see, David is his most precious uh, gift, his most precious jewel on earth was a relationship with God. And that is our most precious gift, our most precious jewel in our life should be our relationship with God. David is in the wilderness of Judah. And, and you don't, we don't think about these things, but, the, but, but this was also the land of milk and honey. But it also had wilderness. It also, it all, it also had places that water was not plenty, that food was not plenty, which kind of reminds us of what we live in today in our life. In each and every one of our lives, if you think about it, we have times. Uh, now, I haven't hungered. I never. I, I can't never say that I've been hungry. I don't know what that feels like. Um, I've all, always had something to eat, and that's a blessing. But there's many that haven't had that. And so we go through life and, or different trials in our life or different times in our life where. We might be in a wilderness. And what does that wilderness look like for you? How does that make you feel? Well, I hope after reading this psalm that we will be like David. And that like in verse 1 when he says, Oh God, you are my God. He uses the word God for there is Elohim. But he also uses the, the singular uh, word for God, and that's Eli. So yet he says, uh, O Elohim, you are my Eli. You are my God. You are, my, you are personal to me. I have a personal relationship with you, and early will I seek you. I will seek you the first thing in the morning when I get up. I am seeking you. I can imagine back when David was in the palace, back when he was in Jerusalem, he would probably, it sounds like, he would probably get up in the morning and he would go out into the palace and he would worship and he would give thanksgiving and he would give offerings to God every morning. But he's in the wilderness now, but yet he's desiring that same relationship He's desiring that same, uh, that same feeling. He, won't, he seeks God in the morning even while he's in the midst of his trials. He still sees God even when he's running from his enemies and even though he's running from his son. No matter how far away he gets from home, he never ceases to pray and acknowledge that God is a necessity in his life and that his most precious gift is his relationship with his God. And that's what we need. God wants us to have a personal relationship with him. He wants us to get to know him on a personal level. And the only way that we can do that is when we stay in his word, when we stay, uh, when we pray to him, when we allow our souls to worship him and to sing to him, even while we're going through our wilderness he says my soul thirsts for you verse uh, uh, psalm chapter 5 verse 3 was another psalm that david wrote and he tells us even there that my voice you shall hear when in the morning O lord in the morning i will direct it to you and i will look up he's not gonna give up uh, he's not allowing this wilderness to take away his joy and so many times I allow things in my life to take away or to rob God of its joy I'm guilty of that I do that and then I find and then I get angry with myself later when all I had to do was to do what David did and that's look up stop looking down on my problems stop looking down on the trials that I go through, because I go through some too, and start looking up, lift my head up to the one who knows all about me, 
and who has my best interests at hand. Psalm 143, 8, David writes these words, Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for you do I, tr for you do I trust, for in you I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. These are all verses that call us to remember God in the morning. Proverbs 4, 18, Solomon writes, But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines brighter until the perfect day. When the, when the sun rises, uh, that's when we, we should also remember God and call on his name. Ecclesiastes eleven six says, In the morning sow your seed, and in the evening do not withhold your hand, for you do not know which will prosper, either this or that, or whether both alike will be good. But in the morning, seek the one who can get us through the day. David says, my soul thirsts for you. Not for water, but for you. David says his primary desire is to seek God. Seek the, seek the one who can quench his spiritual thirst. And God was very important to David, and he learned to wait patiently on him. His relationship with God was of the most important. Matthew 5, 6, in the Beatitudes, when Jesus was preaching on the mount, he said, blessed are those who, what? Hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. That's a relationship with God Almighty. Blessed are those. We need to be uh, about seeking God and thirsting after Him in all things. But, uh, Psalm 42, 1, another verse. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you. That's a desire, that's a thirsting, that's a longing for God to quench uh, our thirst. John 4, 13 through 14, Jesus answered, and this is talking about the woman at the well, and said to her, whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Whoever drinks from the water of this well that you are drawing from, in other words, will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. I believe this is the driving force that drove David to, to be able to pray and to be able to sing and to be able to worship God in the midst of his trials in the wilderness. This is what drove him to be able to do those things because he thirsted, he desired that living water. He, he, he desired uh, that relationship with his God. John 6 33 through 35, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life, and he who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. So it's that our desire should be on Jesus Christ, our desire should be to serve God and He alone should, should be worthy of our praise. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So when you find yourself in the wilderness, look up. Don't hold your head down. Seek Him who can help you. Verse 2. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. David remembers how he experienced the, the presence and the power of God when he went into the temple and worshiped God. I believe that. I believe he, that, that was, uh, he looked forward to those days when he can do that. But in a moment like this, when he's being drove away, when he's out here in a, in a wilderness and and he's not in, back at home in his palace, and he's not capable of going into the 
uh, temple as he would like to, he still is longing and desiring for that same experience while in the wilderness. This is a reminder, or uh, should be a reminder to us, that while we're going through our wilderness, while we're going through our trials, that God is there. He is right there. He has not left us. He is right there in our midst. God's glory, His power can be found in the middle of our struggles, in the middle of our pains, in the middle of our heartaches, in the middle of our sicknesses, and in the middle of our broken relationships. And you can keep going on and on and on. God is right there with us in the midst, in the thick of it all. And God can be seen in all aspects of our life. All we have to do is dil diligently seek Him. Diligently seek Him. Look under the couches. When you are looking for that thing that's most precious to you, 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 you will tear your house up until you find it. That should be our desire for God. If we don't have it, we should do all that we can to find it. James chapter 4 verse 8 reminds us that if we draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Verse 3, because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. David is saying, uh, if, 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 I mean, if you sit there, if you look at it, your loving kindness is better than life. No, he's not worried about his own life. He's not, uh, at this point in time, uh, when he's writing this psalm, he's not thinking about his, um, his physical life at the moment. He said, I, I desire your loving kindness more than I desire to breathe. I desire your loving kindness, God, more than I desire you to remove me uh, from my situation that I'm going through now. I, I desire your loving kindness because... I like to praise you. I want to lift up my voice to you. My lips, he says, shall praise you. That's, that's with, with a voice. He's lifting up praises uh, to God. He's singing uh, God's uh, glory, uh, singing to his glory. He's seeking his uh, presence uh, in his life, and he's not allowing this wilderness uh, to tear that down or to destroy him because your loving kindness is better than life itself. That's what I'm seeking, but so that my lips will praise you. The Psalms were written, every one of the Psalms were written to point us to the object of our worship, and that should be God. That's what the Psalms are for, is to point us to God, which should be the object of our worship our desires. We should always be God. David wants all of us to know. He wants his people to know then, and he wants us to know that, the, that God, he is the reason that we worship. Verse 4. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. I will bless you while I live. In other words, I will continue to praise you throughout my life. My entire life is going to, I'm going, I will spend in worship with you, in desiring you. This is David, and this, and to, you know, think about it. Now, he's doing all of this. He's saying all these things while running trying to keep from being uh, killed. He's saying all this while he's in that wilderness, while the, the water is not as plentiful, food is not as plentiful, but his soul is thirsting for this relationship with God. 
and, and that's awesome uh, to me. I will lift up my hands in your name even while I'm struggling, even when I'm at my weakest, I will bless you while I'm living. I'm not going to wait till life gets better to come to you, to worship you. You know, so many people, and this is sad, and I'm not uh, uh, you know, trying to uh, be ugly toward these people, but so many people have this idea that they have to get right with God before they can come into God's house. They have to change things before they can come into God's house. And that's not true. This is what this is what this house is all about. This is what God, this is what the sanctuary is all about. It's for the brokenhearted, for those who do not have all the answers, for those who, who get confused sometimes, who wonder if if God is really in their life or in the midst of their life. If God is God really beside me? Is He carrying me? Does He hear my prayers? This is where we all need to be, whether we're in this sanctuary or whether the whole, the Holy Spirit is in this sanctuary. Wherever I'm at, I need to be calling on Him. I need to be talking to Him because He's the only one that can get us through. He's the only one that can open up our eyes so that we can recognize that there are people hurting all around us in our workplaces, in our homes, in our neighborhoods. There are people who do not know God, who do not know Jesus like we do. I have some people that's been coming to my house. He's come four times. He's trying his best to convert me while I'm trying to convert him. They're clueless. And it's sad. And I pray for them. I told them I love them. But until they get Jesus in their heart, they ain't got a chance. They need Jesus. And I really do. I want to be a witness to them. And they keep coming back for some reason. <laughs> And I keep letting them in. And I'm going to keep doing that. And that's what I, me and my wife, we talked about this. I'm going to keep doing this because I got a feeling God is, um, they were going to get mad and not come back or, this, or God's going to change them. I hope God can change them with all my heart. But they need Jesus. And we need to be pointing people to Jesus the light of the world, the only one who can forgive sins, who has already prepared a place for us to go. My soul, he says in verse 5, shall be satisfied oh, as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. David is, is, is speaking of the... Uh, of, of the satisfaction of God, of the, just the satisfaction of knowing God and desiring Him, just like His soul was filled with the best uh, when we when He was at the palaces, His His body was filled with the best foods. He's desiring that same uh, feeling from God it, while He's in this uh, wilderness, this fellowship with Him. He's satisfied in the presence of God, and He that's what He's desiring and seeking. David ends this verse with uh, the deepest expression uh, of worship. He says, my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. No matter what I'm going through, 
uh, God, David says, I'm going to praise you all the way to the end. Verse 6 says, remember, when I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches. Just like David said at the very beginning of verse 1, early will I seek you. He also says, even when I go to bed at night, I remember you. I remember you in the morning. I remember you at the night. Just like bookends, right? I'm going to remember you in the morning. And then whatever happens during that day, I'm going to remember you at night. I'm going to thank you for getting me to whatever I went through in that time. I'm going to be, I'm going to praise you. I'm going to be joyful no matter what. Verse 7 says, because you have been my help, therefore in the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. Because you have helped me in the past, because you are helping me now, I have no reason to doubt that you're not going to help me what I'm going through right now. So I'm going to I'm going to praise you and I'm going to follow you and I'm going to stay protected under the shadow of your wings. I know that you're going to be my safe haven, my abode. Verse 8, my soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. My soul follows close behind you. In other words, I'm not, David is not leading this. He's not ahead of God. He's saying, God, you are, you are going to lead me. I'm going to follow. Whatever it is that you're going to have me go through, I'm going to follow you because I'm trusting in you. I'm being protected by you. And I believe you, you, need, you mean me no harm. And so I'm going to lean upon you because your right hand, it holds me. That's strength. The right hand of God, that's a symbol of strength. You are my strength, in other words, is what David is saying. And I'm going to trust in that. Yes. That's cool. I like that. That's that's awesome. That's exactly what David did, right? I mean, that's exactly what David did. He turned his thoughts, even his night thoughts, uh, to God, and we know he had restless nights, but he still meditated on God. All right, verse uh, eight, my, um, uh, verse nine. But those who seek my life to destroy it shall go in to the lower parts of the earth. It's a sad thing, and many people don't uh, believe, but it's, this is a fact. David is not uh, wishing harm on his enemies. He's not wishing that at all, but it's a fact. Anyone that goes against God, anyone who is anti-God, um, their, their life will not be uh, pleasant in the end. They're going down the road of destruction. They will be eternally separated from a God who really loves them and did not want to be separated, but they chose to go their own way. They will not last. They will fail. They will not succeed no matter what they think. They may, may, it may appear to them that they are winning, but in the end, ultimately, they are losing. They've already lost, and they just don't know it yet. They're, they're going to be eternally separated. Verse 10 says, They shall fall by the sword. 
If you live by the sword, you will fall by the sword. That's what the Bible says, right? That's what the scripture says. If you live by the sword, you will fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for jackals. That's like wild dogs is what David is referring to. My enemies uh, will fall and they are going to be food for the wild dogs. They're going to be consumed, in other words, by the judgment of God. God will judge them and God will take care of them and destroy them because ultimately they are going against God. They're not just going against David, but they're going against God and the things of God. And then finally, verse 11 says, But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone who swears by him shall glory. But the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. No matter the trials that David had to face, and David says, The king shall rejoice in God. The Lord will not fail in protecting him or protecting Israel, and the Lord will not fail in protecting us and defeating our enemies. We, we have nothing to fear in this life. If God is for us, then who can, who, who can we fear that's against us if God is for us? He's our strength, and he will fight our battles. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much, God, that we, no matter what we're going through in the wilderness that we're in, right now that we can see you that you are there in the midst of all of our trials and all we have to do is to look up to take you by the hand and you will lead us through you will protect us and you will guard us god may we be like david and seek your face desire your presence in our life desire a fellowship with you so that we can be a better Christian and better serve, servant of yours. And we give you the praise and glory for all you do. In your name.